up, we've got something a little bit different. We are going to be showing some photos and telling stories of people who started in small rooms, server rooms, with one window, to building unicorns or almost unicorns. These are fascinating, fantastic stories. So we've got two or three of them coming up. But first up, he's the founder of a global leading online platform for attractions and activities. Over 250 employees, 10 offices around the world. He started off in Zurich and now is dominating. Can we give a hand and a warm welcome, please, to Johannes Heck. Good luck. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. So um, I've known Felix, the organizer of this conference, by the way, for more than seven years. And I remember when he started up in a garage with his company. Um, I was actually back then uh, you know, sitting next to him in, in, the, in the conference room and asked him about, you know, Felix, how could you build such an amazingly successful company, which was Amiando at the time? Uh, you know, he sold it uh, in the meanwhile. And you know, he basically told me, Johannes, don't listen to the hype, just listen to the principles. So um, you know, today I'm here to tell you a little bit about what we've built in the interim, which is a travel company called, called Get Your Guide, and then also a little bit about the principles of you know, what made us successful. And Felix told me one thing, and that is only pictures. So you're very lucky today that you'll see a world premiere of the entire picture love story from the beginning of Get Your Guide all the way to where we are today. So. Um, Let's start a little bit about uh, Get Your Guide. So um, Get Your Guide is in a very interesting space. So we're leading the experience-driven travel industry. And before I start out, I give you one fact that will shock all of you guys. And that is travel as an industry, one of the biggest global industries, trillions of dollars, is actually still more than 50% offline. Online is less than 50%. And why is that? Why is travel still such a predominantly offline industry? And I can tell you what. Because we in the online world have actually only taken a very small piece out of the ent entire travel ecosystem, and that is flights and hotels. And if you guys think about, you know, what am I actually booking regularly online? It's flights and accommodation. So at Get Your Guide, we're actually starting from the inverse. So what we are doing is we are the biggest global marketplace for selling travel activities. So we're the biggest merchant, for instance, for the Eiffel Tower, for the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, for the day uh, tours to Neuschwanstein here from Munich, uh, for the TD Tower in Berlin, for the Empire State Building in New York City. So we have you know, more, you know, thousands and thousands of travel activities, of, of day tours, of excursions, of walking to Segway tours, etc., cetera, uh, in destinations around the world. And, and that is really the interesting part of online travel, if you think about it. Because when you travel, you don't travel to stay in a hotel or to, to, to fly with an airplane. You're actually traveling to see something, to do something. That is what the, online, uh, what the offline travel agent back in the day was actually recommending you. And the way how our business model works is that we have more than 30,000 uh, active activities now on our platform from more than 10,000 suppliers all around the world. And we now sell to millions of customers every single month through our platform where we uh, collect a commission fee for every booking that we do. We also have a partner network of more than 10,000 partners now, ranging from big uh, global travel companies like Booking.com all the way to your local concierge desk at your hotel here in Munich. And what it turns out, and what was a very, very big surprise for most people in our space, is that this in-destination travel market is actually not just a small niche market. So I, you know, probably very much like all of you guys, when your investors have been telling you, is your market interesting, is it big enough? This is the same question they asked me, and everyone said it's a small market, you know, don't bother about it, it's too manual, it's too small. It turns out it's a $100 billion market, and the beauty is all of the big sightseeing attractions and activities, capitals in the world are actually predominantly in Europe. So this is a European market. It's not going to be a Silicon Valley market, I can promise you as much. Even though the guy from Airbnb tomorrow will tell you something else, this is a European market. $50 billion uh, in Europe. 
This is our market. This is the Get Your Guide market. Now, why is this such a great online product? Um, you know, it's just made for online. People do want to decide at the very last minute. They want to be spontaneous. They want to book something at their fingertips. You know, this is where the smartphone comes in that has just propelled us in growth over the last couple of years. They want to be guided through GPS and Google Maps to the meeting point. They want to have an online ticket. It has to be redeemed directly at the venue, all of which was never possible in the offline world before we came in. You know, people want to enjoy, want to get additional information about what they see when they travel on their smartphone, and they want to review stuff after the activity is done and be recommended the next great things that they can do in the destination. And we're just getting started. You know, this is really just day one. And, you know, so like this is a, you know, well-set phrase in, 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 in with startups, but, you know, I can tell you in the travel world, we're still so much away from perfect and what it means to have a perfect travel experience. I told you guys in the beginning, more than 50% still offline. For our market, the in-destination market, it's 98%. Can you believe it? The slide that I just showed you with the mobile device, 98% of customers still don't book on smartphones when they are in destination. It's mostly still just by walking up, talking to concierge services, or going through offline travel agents. And you know, when you think about the power that this, you know, that technology has for, on, for, 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 for travel services, local travel services, it's vast. We can give you so much better recommendations. You know, find local, interesting walking tours or experiences in your language. Find them at the time of the day for families or for people without families. Find them near to your hotel. You know, book them instantly at the very last minute. And then always receive consistent quality, right? You know, who can say that, you know, local services or, you know, the way how you experience a destination is really consistent in terms of quality and, and in terms of supply worldwide? That's a big problem in our market. So it is day one. It's super interesting. Now, how many of you guys are actually entrepreneurs? Can you lift your hand? Entrepreneurs. Okay, that's what I thought. So I stopped the Get Your Guide pitch here, which is very unusual. It's the first time I do this, so bear with me if it's terrible. But this is the Get Your Guide pitch. I'll stop now, and I'll tell you from here on what I think, what the big you know, points were to be successful in this industry and how we could go to where we are today. So number one, we're, we're a Berlin-based company today, but most people don't know we were actually started as the um, moderator set in a garage in Switzerland, very garage in Switzerland. Why Switzerland? I was a student at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, ETH Zurich. And um, wait one second, Mike. <laughs> Here we go. So um, and our initial idea was actually not the idea of Get Your Guide Today. Our initial idea was a peer-to-peer -peer platform for students. Our idea was to have a hybrid of Facebook and, and, and eBay and for the travel space. So we wanted to empower all students uh, at any university worldwide to make some extra money by offering tours. And it was a very non-commercial project. It was a complete garage, absolutely self-funded. Um, you know, for two years, we, we lived off a you know, self-infused check of, of 5,000 euros, something very few people uh, can understand these days. Uh, there was no venture funding, and we failed miserably. It was a complete failure. Why? Over two years of building this platform, we could only attract 200 students to list tours, and even worse, we only sold four activities total over two years. It's like the worst failure. All of you guys ha have failed better than I did. I was the worst. Out of the four bookings, three bookings were my mother who took pity on us. But we learned one thing. Our phone was actually never, never stopped ringing in this small room. We had one for a telephone, and we had, we had a telephone number for that. And that got published in a few newspapers. And a lot of professional activity providers actually called us, the museums, the attractions. Uh, you know, with long lines and no way to handle their capacity, the hop-on, hop-off bus tours, the walking tour supplies, and they all wanted to sell online. They all knew that online was coming and the hotels were already there, 
and they instinctively felt that they have to partner up with like some small player that is not that threatening to them, like the big booking.coms of the world, and you know, that lists them online. And so we completely revamped our model. We went back to ground zero and started from scratch. Those are images I showed the first time in a public presentation. Those are images from the period of time when we were just with a bunch of non-paid interns and students. We all didn't earn a dime. We restarted from scratch. We sat together in a very small room. Now, our, my parents were sending me money every single month, and so for the other founders as well. And we revamped our entire platform just to start again and just try it one more time. And we relaunched this platform, and it became the Get Your Guide of today, the biggest, or what it today is the biggest back then with the dream of being the biggest uh, travel platform for professional activity providers worldwide. And guess what? This time we took off instantly. In the first month, we did 10 bookings. In the second month, we did 30 bookings. In the third month, we did more than 100 bookings. And then I remember, I think one and a half years in or so, we corked a champagne when something happened that we had never anticipated, more than 100 bookings uh, every single day. And you know, let me tell you a little bit about why I think that this second time was a success. And you know, this is where I come to the five principles that we still have internally at Get Your Guide, which are part of our core culture of you know, how we build success in our company. Number one is we are extremely customer-centric. If you think about the story that I just told you, where we went back to the drawing board, you know, completely took the risk on us to relaunch, what we did was not to follow some investor. We didn't have investors. What we did is we followed the customers. We followed the market. We thought about you know, how do people actually book activities today. We didn't you know, follow great ideas or you know, gut feeling or concepts. We didn't follow what was hype. You know, if we would have followed what was hype, we would have stuck with a peer-to-peer -peer platform, but we followed where the market was. And from, now, from then on you know, to the present day, we are just so customer-centric. The entire company is only built around the customer. Even I go to customer service still every single week and serve as a customer agent just to you know, put an example into the company. My entire management team has to do that. We run hundreds of customer-centric A-B tests every single month. So being customer-centric and focusing on customer needs and not investor needs, and not you know, what people tell you on stage that are very smart at you know, big tech conferences. No, focus on your customers. If I can tell you one thing that will make you successful, focus and listen to your customers, even when it hurts. And they tell you they don't want your service like it was the case in our first iteration. Secondly, raise money. And raise money at the right point in time. Don't raise money prematurely, so don't raise money before you have this initial traction. But once you have it, raise money. We raised more than $100 million now within four years. And why? If you find something that works and you start to scale, you will have big competition, guaranteed. So make sure that you don't forget to fund yourself properly. Most successful companies with good models don't die because of a bad business plan or a bad idea, but they die because they're not properly funded. Something that's a big problem still in Europe, but that we are currently solving. So make sure that you don't run into this trap. Thirdly, we built an inspirational brand. What does that mean? We have not invested in TV advertisement or built a big PR campaign or something like that. Building an inspirational and grand, great brand is a direct consequence of being customer-centric. So engage with your customers. Make sure that you track loyalty. Make sure that you see how the great product market fit that you have and that you const continuously adjust really creates brand loyalty and, and repeat, and that customers start to talk about you. Don't just go in and waste millions and millions of your funding into some stupid marketing or TV ad campaign just because people told you to build a brand. Build a brand together with your customers. Make them your fans. And lastly, invest in building an amazing product. Something I would say probably the most underestimated thing still in Europe is to really focus in on, on building an amazing product. When I'm not in the customer service center, as I just told you, I am in the middle of my product and engineering team. I am with them every single sprint. We have more than 250 people. I am sitting in the middle of the engineering team, specking features with them, testing, seeing analysis, understanding what works and what doesn't work. Make sure that you really focus on your product and iterate it according to what the customer wants. And lastly, focus on building a great culture. A great culture is not being built when you're a unicorn rock star and you, know, you have some coaches and consultants coming in. It is not built then. A great culture is built very much you know, during the time when I showed you these images, in the first weeks and months after you launch your product, you know, when you struggle, you know, when you have to keep your team together even though no one sees a paycheck. 
you know, this is when a great culture is being built. And we have really focused on our culture from day one at Get Your Guide. And it is very special and very peculiar to us. And people who walk into our offices, and this is always the litmus test that I have, they will tell me the attributes of our culture that we wrote down, things like passion, commitment, learning, uh, positivity, you know, things that we really value and that we put into our culture every day that we hire and fire based upon. This is what you need to build from day one. People need to see it when they walk and they need to feel it. And you know, that is the last, maybe the most important principle that I can give you for building a great company. And with that, the last thing is, you know, once you have these things together, you know, once you have funding, you have a good idea with product market fit and you have traction and you build based on these principles around customer centricity and culture, the great thing is your future will always be ahead of you. So, you know, people tell me today, you know, when I walk around very often, you know, Johannes, get your guys such a great company, why don't you sell it and, you know, make a lot of money? And the thing is, you know, when you have a great company and it's running and you have, you know, this strong self-reinforcing uh, reinforcing culture, then there's so much innovation that constantly comes. I just described some of the key elements of the future of travel along the lines of personalization, local experience driven to you. It's just amazing what you can do because ultimately a company is not only you as founders, but it's the people around you, your ecosystem, and the people you work with and that you recruit. And when you build around a great product, when you build around a great culture, you know, this is what you can achieve. So when I stand here today, and those are my last words, you know, you can be the Johannes who was in Felix's office, you know, 10 years ago. You can build this. It's not rocket science. It's really just focusing on principles. So thank you very much. I wish all of you guys all the best of luck with your startups. Let me know if I can be helpful. And uh, have a great show. Thank you. All right. Johannes, thank you so much. Really dynamic, very practical questions and answers. I will uh, chat with you backstage with a few more questions. All right, more great stories of companies starting from very little and becoming huge. This is another unicorn. I'll tell you a little something that I shouldn't tell you on stage, though. So I was Googling. This is how professional I am, right? I was Googling the next person, and I thought we were going to have an amateur Turkish freestyle wrestler. Um, so if you Google the next person, you were probably thinking you're going to get a freestyle wrestler who competed in the heavyweight division. But no, 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 that is not who's coming up. Just to clarify, this guy is from Berlin. He's amazing. For the last four years, he's been working really hard as one of the co-founders of Auto One. You probably know them, 2,000-plus employees in over 20 countries. The guy is absolutely amazing. Please put your hands together for Hakan Koch. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, thanks everyone for coming. Um, and Felix invited me, he said, no fancy corporate slides, please do a photo safari from the very first days. Just let's be open to people who are still afraid of building a company or just sitting in the living room saying it must be perfect, we don't have this, we don't have that, I'll start next week, I'll start tomorrow. And th then you always wait for perfect. They will never be perfect and I will show you really bad pictures so you see, we also weren't perfect, we still aren't, and um, that's the trick, you just do it. Um, so about Auto One, um, we are the biggest marketplace and market maker in used cars. Um, I think, in, just to give you a, um, a reference opposed to all the classifieds, we bring liquidity to the market, that means we buy the car. Yes, that means you need a big balance sheet, but that also brings very much service to both ends of the market. Uh, here are some numbers, but that's, uh, uh, you can look it up on the internet. I think the power is actually, when you think about on the left, our sourcing branches, and on the right, um, all the dealers that buy from us, that shows you a little bit how you, can, how you can bring efficiency to a market by just consolidating demand. And these two sides of the market are connected with a fully digital product. So there is an iPad solution in the branches, there's a website, um, no data set is touched twice, so there really is a digital product as the whole heart of it. But, I mean, how has it started? Yeah? Christian, Christian and I um, uh, wanted to have our own company in 2012. Um, so we quit our positions, and Christian was at Groupon. And why is Groupon so important here? The first furniture we got was a free giveaway from Groupon. They were just moving their, their corporate headquarters. Everybody was online, and we said, oh, we want to have a new company. 
let's save some money, and there you see is a one-room office. What's the quality of this one-room office? Is that it costs 100 euros rent per month. That was the only quality. Uh, when you look out the window, there's garbage. It was below a, a youth hostel. People were throwing garbage out of the window. I was sitting with investors there and said, never mind, people are throwing something out of the window. Focus on me, please. This is a cool company. And what I want to show is, from here you can start a company like that. But what is also important, you need to have an office. You need to have a place every morning where you go to. Uh, your company is the best company you will ever work for, so have the decency to show up at office and not play home office or cafeteria games. Um, next thing that will always be, if you want, so a key guideline is uh, IKEA. Yeah, you will build a lot of furniture when you grow fast. And the second thing is, it doesn't have to be ugly. So the first thing we said, we will never have time again, let's rent some art. And again, it's no, no money issue. Renting art in Berlin costs one euro per picture per month, and it already includes insurance. But it doesn't look like it looked before. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean, we had the idea. We thought it through and said, how do we do it? Let's code the website. I built the back end. You built the front end. Let's agree on a basic data set on the whiteboard and just say, this is it. Let's start. Yeah, let's take some money, throw it on AdWords, and see what happens. And what happened is we bought a Nissan Micra on the street for 180 euros. Um, it was great. We sold it for 240 the same evening. So it's a great business. Yeah. Paid our lunch. And uh, I mean, from there on, we had so much traction and already saw that the consumer was in a deep need, actually, for a good service, that, uh, that it was growing and growing, and we could raise the first round and go to the notary. Everybody knows these notary things. In Germany, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's horrible and beautiful. Uh, but after, I don't know, 12 hours sitting there, you walk out and know you have a deal. Um, and this is our first branch in Berlin Banco, where we also had our office headquarter for roughly two and a half years. And um, yeah, it kept filling up with cars. Then it kept filling up with cars. And um, yeah, you, should, you could see something was going on. But again, as you see, it doesn't look fancy. But it's, uh, I mean, all the top VCs have come to this place. And we couldn't care less. We said, that's, uh, that's our office. We want to be close to the business. So here you are. You want to visit me? It's in Panko. It's a long taxi drive, so take something to read. And after these beautiful places in Berlin, we had to roll out. And roll out means you have to drive into industrial areas all over Germany, talk to landlords who only own this property and are as professional, and, uh, and look how beautiful it is. And this is, in fact, top left our, our branch in Cologne before it was remodeled, if you want so. And the other one is our branch in Hamburg, which looks like a jail from here. Um, and on the top right, you see you also have to be humble. This is a hotel room standard that you travel in as a founder. Yeah? But it only costs 40 bucks. So this is not the consultant Starwood life. You just have to be focused where the money goes, and this is where you stay. Uh, and then you build again a lot of IKEA furniture. This is our branch head and still our branch head from end of 2012 in, uh, in Hamburg. And uh, then we had weather. We thought, OK, hmm, how can we buy a car when it's raining? So we set up a tent and, uh, and, and had blue light. Uh, again, nothing's perfect, uh, but it did the job. And the customers knew these guys really aren't wasting money, so I'm getting a good price. Yeah? Apparently, there's nothing to spend any capex on here. And uh, we still have that lean principle because we just had very early feedback from customers who said, I don't need the 30 million euro glass palace uh, uh, from Mercedes because when I sell there, I know 500 euro goes to the rent here. So um, they appreciate it and we made it part of our business model. And then we got more and more professional, of course. Yeah, here you see one of our first interns who is then setting up all the iPads for all the purchasers because it's growing and growing and growing. And um, of course, then from a certain point, you have your first academy, you teach your people, you great, get great talent on board, and uh, get more and more professional. But I mean, you've seen where it came from. So had we never started like that, buying the micro on the street, we would never have come here. And um, don't forget to party. Yeah? That's important. You don't have a sound system. Take an old car. Yeah? It, it can also play some music. Um, but I think that's important. I mean, that's also a little bit the spirit why people join you. They don't want to be 
in the stiff corporate environment. They don't want to wear a tie anymore. So, I mean, never forget what the DNA of your company is, and it will evolve, it will develop, but um, there should always be fun involved. Um, no? So, on the top left, you see our MD and head of sales, Robert, sitting in the car, which was by then very usual, because when we were taking calls, we didn't have enough space, so our call cubes were single old junk cars that we would leave unlocked. So I did a lot of fundraising. Uh, whoever was on the other part of the line, now you know it, I was sitting in an old car. Um, and that has shown us we need a bigger office, and we thought this new office in Prenzlauer Berg, we will never outgrow it, 580 square meters, great. Let's build IKEA furniture, of course. And uh, a few months later, we ended up having four offices because we couldn't cope with the growth. So we had a one-year temp lease uh, from, a, I don't know, design academy that was going out. We had the former um, Zalando administration building. These were all term contracts, and you were waking up every morning with the fear, what happens if I haven't found another place for, to put my people before this rent turns, uh, runs out? And... Um, yeah, I mean, luckily, eventually, we found a bigger spot. Um, on the road, we were also um, pretty successful, and then again, notarizing, again, those rounds, never forget to party. Yeah, and uh, I mean, at the end of the road, you see this and think, yeah, if I don't have something fancy like this, then, uh, then I shouldn't start. But you've seen the first picture, it's a long way. And um, of course, you want to host every one of your company together, but we could also manage it over four offices. And uh, I think that's the, that's the most important message. I see a lot of founders who try to over-optimize before they even start. Uh, but I mean, to get it rolling, you can just go down on the street with a, a clipboard in your hand and do business. And that is the core of your business. It's nothing to do with the fancy office or the setup. We didn't have an internet line. You can plug in your iPhone. And, uh, and you're connected, yeah? but you have to be committed and you have to wake up every morning and say, I want to do this, and then the environment doesn't make a difference. So in my eyes, more beautiful than this is uh, actually this, and this is still our first branch, and uh, we still visit it, yeah? and we train our people there, and um, yeah, that's the message, yeah? start, uh, have no fear, it will never be perfect, but it will get you there. Thank you. All right, Hakan, thank you so much. Great to hear from you.